Hello everyone, it's Jarrett Moore back again with another YouTube video. And today I'm going to be talking about referencing tables in Power Query. And I had a great conversation with uh, one of our enterprise DNA experts, Brian Julius, over the weekend. And we were talking about this exact thing. And I did this on a couple of my models to test things out. I know I've I, I heard about this in the past, but I had never been using this best practice. But today I'm going to show you in a brief video here of how you can reference these tables to A, uh, improve your refresh time and B, improve your data performance um, inside of your models and especially inside of Power Query. So without further ado, let's hop on into Power BI Desktop. Okay, everyone, I went ahead and opened up a one of my files that I, um, this is a file that I had before I did the adjustment here in the Power Query editor. So what I'm going to do today is we'll take these bottom three tables at, at the screen here where my mouse is. And what we're going to do is reapply or apply those steps that I was telling you about. And what you're gonna do if this is a pre-existing model is you're not gonna change the names of these um, tables of data that we have in here. But what we're going to do is bring in that same set of data a second time, and then we'll reference it inside of these three tables here. So you go up here to your, um, in your case, either go to new source, or we can go to recent uh, sources in my case here and open up this file where I have all this, where I have all these tables of data. And they are named the same. So what I'll do is scroll down here and go to the job management and I will go to log notes and I will go to the GL. In this case, it's actually the, the version two here and I'll hit okay. And what this is will do is reload um, the data in here for each one of these again. So what we're going to do here First step in the best practice is you're going to go into these new tables of data. And I believe one of our enterprise DNA experts, uh, Greg, in his best practice videos, um, what he does is he renames each one of these tables just to know that this is the, uh, the raw data or the original source of where we're pulling this data from. Um, what he does is he renames this, this file and just names raw at the end of it. So what we'll do here real quick is just rename each one of these to have raw on the end. Just tab out of that. We'll do this one more time over here and I'll get rid of that version two. That way we have the same name as the other query there. And what I'll do is click on that right there. So now we have our, um, our, our tables here. Let me refresh this. And this is a, is, is a primary example. This, this table takes quite a bit to load in Power Query and sometimes you get this, um, that the refresh, uh, the preview refresh was canceled. So, um, it, it takes a while for, um, this data to load. So this is, uh, I'll, I'll let this do its thing and then we'll get back to, uh, the next part of this transformation. Okay. So now we're back from that. What I'm going to do is take these, uh, raw data tables and just simply, um, move them by holding my mouse down above. If I can do this correctly here. My mouse is a little sticky right now. Put that above there. And then we'll do the same thing for the other two. Okay, now that all that's been done, not that you have to do it this way. It's just uh, one one thing that I like to organize just so this is um, just this is the, the way of the order there. So this is what I like to do. So now all that you do, now that you have all of these raw data tables is all we're going to do is go into the original tables and change um, some things in the query editor to where we just reference this raw data table instead of bringing in the data, um, in this case, like be, being it brought, bring it in for a second time. So what I can do is go to this table right here, the job management, go up to the advanced editor. And what you're going to do is these first two lines here um, of code reference the um, original load of the data. Um, so, but we have to keep that source in there. So all we're gonna do is get rid of this code right here and then 
basically all I'm going to do is start typing in the same name, job management and raw, and then I'll add a comma and then you hit done. And let's see what I did wrong here. That's a good example. I forgot a step. So that's uh, part of, of learning how to do this. So if I go back to the advanced editor, I forgot to do something in the second line of code here. This references this top line right here. So I have to get rid of this underscore job management and I have to replace it with source. And then this should be the, so your two steps is you have to change those first two lines in, in my instance here with this code and then change that second line here to source. And then we hit done and boom. Now we have our, our, our data the way that we want. So let's go ahead and do that for the next table here and see if it's a little bit different here. So I'll go into the log notes table and I'll open up the advanced editor. And this one as well is two lines. So I can go ahead and go in here and start typing in log notes raw, hit that comma, and then we'll change this log notes back once again to source. And then we can hit done and we've got that one done. And now we'll do this one more time with the final table here, the, uh, the geo balance by day here. So advanced editor and we'll get rid of these first two lines of code again, just by typing in GL balance by day raw, that comma, and then we'll change this to source again. And hit done. And this should be our step to get the data in here. And I have one more step before I finish the video here. And this is very important that what you want to do is because what you don't want to have happen here is loading the same table twice. So you don't want to have the, the data refresh for both of these tables. So the raw data tables, what we're going to do is disable the load um, inside the query editor here. So if we go to the job management raw and we right click this button right here that says enable load, if I uncheck that, You'll see that that comes like italicized now. So that's not included in the data model, which is very important um, that you do this in the final step. So there was the raw table there. We'll do it for this one as well. And then we'll do it for the final one right here and this step right here. And that is it for today's um, video. This was a, a, a very brief explanation of, of how to do this. But one last thing before I let you go is I'll show you how this performed before I did this. And I did this for all of the tables that are in here and not just these three. And uh, you can see the little bit of the difference here. So let me pull that up. Okay, so it is um, Monday morning here in the US. Um, on 919, so you can see that uh, the refresh, I mean, it takes five minutes for this file to refresh, anywhere from five to five to 10 minutes for this to, um, for this to happen. And I did this on Saturday the 17th, and you can see none of these scheduled refreshes have failed. But as we scroll down here to Friday, you can see that the scheduled refreshes are failing in between three and four times a day. So if you're not already using this, I would definitely start using this in your existing models and any new models that you have moving forward. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.